In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a blank ceiling like this and turn it into that. Coming up right now. Hey everybody, Rudy here from the Home Improvement Channel with another video helping you fix things around the house. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install this ceiling fan where there was no pre-existing light fixture at all. Um, in this particular case, I do have attic access, but I'm going to give you some tips and pointers where if you don't have attic access, this will still work. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is find yourself a power source. Um, the most obvious place that you're going to want to take the power source from is right here at the power switch. Uh, unfortunately, the way they wired this power switch, it goes to a plug in the room, and it's not. there's no continuous power source here, so I can't tap off of it. So I had to find another power source somewhere else. Um, but your best bet is to source off of here if you can. And if you can't, uh, maybe you have an attic light in the attic you can source from up there. Um, if either one of those two doesn't work, then uh, you're on your own to find your own power source. But you're going to have to have a continuous power source. What I need to do is take away this box right here. And I want to put in a three gang box. Uh, that way I still have my switchable plug. And then I'm adding another switch for the fan and another switch for the fan light. So that's three switches. So what I use in this case is an old work box that goes behind the drywall with these uh, flippy ears like this. And it works great. Um, of course, when you do this, make sure that you go in the direction against the studs. If you cut this out and you got a stud right here on this side, then, well, you're going to be upset. Uh, of course, in this case, the studs are here by the door. Uh, so we're clear on that side. I usually put these backwards against the wall, tracing one side against the existing hole. That way I can get the exact size traced out right here. Just try to make sure that it's on there straight. If you have a little 12 inch level maybe, that would be ideal. I don't have one handy, so I'm going to eyeball it. And that's the way you do that, or that's the way I do it. Yeah, it definitely makes it a whole lot easier to get this box out of the way when you get this side of the hole cut out. I like to use one of these guys, a little zip tool, and uh, just kind of be careful. Don't go in too deep, because you never know what's behind the wall. But uh, anyway, yeah, we got to get this box out of the way. Just going to remove this switch. Your best bet on this is to do this with the power turned off. All right, so we got to get this box out of here. So it's a little bit tricky. More than likely, you guys will have more wires than this in your plug. If you're able to source the power, you'll probably have one set coming in that's providing the power source and then another set leaving to go to wherever it's going at a minimum. But in my case, I've only got one set of wires, so kind of get a screwdriver in there. And the trick to this is you got to do it without screwing up the drywall, or at least that's the goal. So I kind of work like this away from the drywall so that I don't wind up scratching up the side of it right there. There we go, got one side loose. There we go. That's it, that's loose. 
pull it out of the hole carefully. I've had some of these that just will not come out whatsoever. And I've had to take that zip tool that I cut this out with and actually slice the box up to get it out of the hole. So if you got to do that, then you got to do that. Who cares? All right. So now what you're going to want to do is feed your wires through from the attic to go to uh, the fan. I need a power source to come down since I don't have one and I need one leaving to go to the fan. Uh, so we're going to work on that. All right, so I've determined that this is directly above where my switch hole is at right here in the attic. Just going to have to drill a hole in the top plate of this wall here. And uh, just so you know, a lot of times there's a lot of wires already coming down through here. If you don't have room to feed your wire through and you got to drill another hole, it's best to be real careful to stay away from those wires. Because if you try to drill another hole right next to it, you don't know what those wires are doing on the inside of the wall and you might hit a wire. So I'm clear in this case, but a lot of times it's not. There we go. And I can actually see the light coming through there. So we're right on top of it. I'm using a 14-3, I'm sorry, a 12-3 to go between the uh, fan and the switch because I'm already on a 20 amp circuit. Normally a 14.3 would be just fine because these are usually 15 amp circuits. But uh, the source that I had to tap from was a 20 amp circuit. And I've got a 12.2 coming from my source. Yeah, they're hitting a block inside the wall. Thought I felt them hitting something. You could use a fiberglass rod for this, but it's not really necessary. It's just four feet straight below the hole. So I'm just going to kind of be patient with it. There we go. I made it past. I think it went through. Let me go check. There we go. Got him through. And that's about it for that. All right, so just feed your wires through. And put it all back. And yeah, you're probably thinking right now, he didn't staple the wires inside the wall. But you know what? If you want to destroy the drywall just to staple the wires in the wall, then uh, go ahead. But that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Just tighten these screws down. Yeah, when you cut these off, I always leave the grounds just a little bit longer than the rest of them because I've got two switches here. And when I do this to tie them together, I want a little extra on there. That's just the way I do it. You might have a different way that you like to do it. It doesn't really matter that much. Put your little crimp ring on there. Whites go together. Just shove them in the back somewhere. And on this power source, these two here go to the fan. On the power source, you got to split that. You can either hook it to one switch and then make a little short jumper to go to the next switch, or you can make two pigtails and tie it together with this to go to the two switches. I like to do the two pigtails because the little jumper wire seems like a pain in the neck to me. Now this is what I mean right here by the two pigtails. 
Um, I've taken the main source coming in and I've just tied two pigtails to it. I'm not going to leave them this long, but then I'm just going to run one to each switch and that's how you do that. You can do this for three or four switches or how many ever switches you need. All right, got it all back together. As you can see, um, one little tip that I wanted to mention to you is if you put the panel back on and it seems to stick out of the wall and it's not very flat and nice and flush, take these little ears right here and snap these off. Um, usually these come off at an angle and then they sit down inside of the groove in between the switches. I didn't do it because mine, mine fits perfectly so it was just extra work for no reason. All right, as you can see here, I got the uh, switches back together. And I wanted to show you a couple of things that uh, I mentioned in the beginning of the video. If you don't have attic access, you can still do this. It's just going to cost you some drywall repairs to get it done. Um, but what you have to do when you bring those wires from wherever you're bringing them from, you got to cut the drywall. And um, right here in the corner, you're going to have to cut a square out here like this and one out here so that you can bring that wire up and over all right and then as you're tracking across the ceiling if you're in a closed ceiling like on a second floor and there's an upstairs you're gonna have to go and find each stud and then cut a square next to each stud so that you can f and then drill each um, well I'm calling them studs joists and you're going to have to do that across and halfway across the room until you get to the fan. Okay, see my other video on installing the can lights. Um, it's a few videos back on the, on my video page there, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about because uh, I was in that situation with installing the can lights, and that's really the only way I know of to get the wire through there is you got to drill the joist and cut the drywall in front of the joist so that you can see what you're doing. But in this case, we have an attic, so uh, luckily we don't have to fool with all that. All right, so as you can see, I've measured out the room here, got the uh, hole directly in the middle of the room. Um, before you get carried away with a saw and marking the ceiling up with a pencil or whatever you're going to use, uh, you, this, i got this stupid textured ceiling here, so a stud finder doesn't really work that good. Um, I went up in the attic and found... I, stuck a piece of wire up in the attic like this and I found the hole and by the way this is a good way to um, poke this up through the insulation that way you can find the hole a lot faster I wanted to make sure I had enough clearance before you know away from the uh, trusses to make sure that I'm not in the middle of all that you know because they do make a electrical box that saddles over the top of a joist or a truss if you happen to cut the hole in the middle of the room and there's a joist right there, so you can do that. But in my case, I'm in the clear. So I'm going to use one of these ceiling braces right here. It uh, goes up through the hole and then you turn it like this to tighten it up against the other trusses. And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So this is the metal piece that, come, that came out of the bracing kit. Um, just put it up on the ceiling like this so you can draw a pattern around it. That looks reasonable. And I'm just going to use a keyhole saw to cut it out. One trick that I learned, if you try not to spread dust all over the place, is you can hold a vacuum cleaner up to this saw as you're cutting around it like this. And it will catch most of the dust in the vacuum cleaner. So that'll help uh, alleviate some of the mess that you're going to make. reasonably round hole. Uh, one thing you should note is I've already gone up there and made sure there was no wires in the way but if you don't know and you're just cutting into a hole like that don't be going like this because there could be a wire right above that hole and uh, be a whole lot of sadness if you hit it. 
All right, so this is the piece right here. Just keep expanding that in these teeth right here. I don't know if you can even see them, but there's teeth on each end and they expand out into the uh, trusses and make sure that this piece, these flat fingers right here, are flat up against the drywall up inside the ceiling. You can use this on a ceiling that you don't have attic access to. I'm just using this because I already had it here and it's going to work fine in this application. And of course you just keep turning it and it expands out until you get to your size. And I finally got it to expand out. Once it gets tight, just don't crank it too hard or you're going to tear it loose. hard enough so that those spikes can dig in. All right, once you uh, once you're ready, you just put this little horseshoe thing up around the um, up around the piece up there and then get your two screws started. And I advise you don't use the middle hole because that's where the the rod goes across the middle so you won't be able to access that. So we'll use one of the ones off to the side. I learned that the hard way one time. And just tighten it up. And don't forget the ground screw. Alright guys, that's about it. Um, I'm just going to go up in the attic, of course, and bring the wire over to here and then poke it through and that's and then staple the wire up in the attic and that's all I'm going to do for that. Uh, this is ready for a ceiling fan after I do that. Um, you would just hang up a ceiling fan as you normally would. I'm not going to be uh, hanging up the ceiling fan on the video. Uh, they're all the same on that but uh, that's how you hook a ceiling fan up uh, to an area where you don't have any light fixture. If you enjoyed this video click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.